Good morning. Um, I've just done my workout and uh, I wish I could go back to bed. I just did a 15-ish minute abs workout. Uh, just followed something on YouTube, which is like low impact, um, but still high intensity. And now I'm about to do my physio and then I'll be going to study um, in one of the study spaces on campus at 12. So it should be a good day. I thought whilst I was waiting for my coaching call, um, I would just show you a little bit about kind of what I have to help me in my room. In terms of my bed, there's not really much. I have my bedside table next to it, which kind of helps me get up. I have a heated blanket for when it's really cold, but I actually get really hot at night. And most of the time I sleep with my window open, so that's not really, like, needed. But when I do need it, it's basically, um, if I kind of stir at, say, like, 6 or 7 a.m., I'll just turn it on low because then it will help me actually get out of bed. The wardrobe in this dorm is like so good because it just has these so I don't have to worry about actually like grabbing any handles. Obviously the room is quite small so I don't really need to think about like getting to and from places. And then in the bathroom I have a um, handle in the shower because there's this step and I don't like that step. So in here, I have my own little suction handle. I also have that non-slip um, mat, which I just put it up there to dry um, because my balance is terrible. So if I do slip, I don't like, I would go flying. So I've got the non-slip mat and the handle that helps me get in and out, plus like stabilizing when I'm actually in the shower, um, which is quite good. I don't really close this ever because it's so hard to open so i just leave it too which i guess is also good for like airing and whatnot again because the bathroom is quite small i don't really need much else um the occasional time that i get stuck um because i've got the shower right here and that wall i tend to be okay but i do have another handle just in case but the problem is is i would need it in this open space so there's not really much I can do about that. Um, and I keep all of my stuff at this level so that, um, I don't know. I find it easier than having it next to the tap. That is literally just a personal thing. Also, I love these taps because they're just like, I don't have to worry about gripping anything. It's brilliant, but the, a lot of this stuff is just like, it works um whereas like if it didn't so if it was like proper like turny taps i would um maybe get something on them depending on how stiff they are or like get an extended lever 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 and then obviously my wonderful stick which literally stays here all the time so that i try not to forget it i'm really good at forgetting it that's the problem with having an invisible disability um <laughs> you forget that you have it but yeah, that is pretty much it. And yeah. So I am off out. I've got my stick. I have my wrist support on. That's gonna make the camera so shaky. I'm so sorry. Um, I use a backpack because it's easier on my shoulders and like doesn't offset me when I'm walking. Obviously when I have it on my shoulder like this, it hurts. But yeah, I'm going to the study space. I've got my coat, my jumper, my scarf. Melania, because I get cold. I also have arth arthritis gloves in my bag. And yeah, hopefully it should be a good day. Outfit of the day, complete with the stick. I'm about to show you guys this sign. Ooh. It's this purple one here, which I made to promote accessibility around campus and hopefully get in more. Thought I'd just show you what I'm having for dinner tonight. I found out myself. It's a Sunday. So these are just stuffing balls, which um, I made. This is just a bit of carrot, it's so small because it's wrong. Corn, which I just boiled. Roast potatoes, they were probably the hardest work, but um, the hardest bit is like peeling them and cutting them. That's why I only have a few. This is cold cut roast beef. So this, I didn't, um, 
like cook. I bought it from the supermarket and then just heated it up. And then these are Yorkshire puddings, which I batch cooked a couple of weeks ago. Um, and then I froze them so that then I would only have to do that once in a while so that I can then have some when I want them, yeah. This weekend, I even Friday to be honest, has really made me realize how much of a boring life I lead. Yeah, I don't know what I was expecting. That was gonna be some like, really exciting person to blog about my day-to-day -day life not happening i wanted to talk more about my fibromyalgia and talk more about my disability um obviously i showed you kind of some of the bits around the room like and the fact that i work out so i do a small exercise try and do a small exercise every morning um, these are normally about 20 minutes with my physio on the end of that. I just thought I'd talk a little bit more about my journey with invisible disability and chronic pain. First started to notice pain in my hips when I was about 13, 14 and I'd gone to see my doctor and I got signed off of PE at school because I couldn't do any high impact activities. Then I bounced basically from physio to physio and it was getting worse. I walked to and from school and I realised that that was like causing me a pain. I still had to do it um, but that, because that was the only physical activity I was getting involved with. So this was becoming like quite a big issue but we didn't really know why because I was like I said bouncing from physio to physio. They were just saying that I needed to stretch out my muscles, but then I was doing these exercises and nothing was happening. So yeah, I just had to kind of carry on with it. <clears throat> um, then it got to the point where I was prescribed codeine to help deal with the pain. Um, so I was just kind of doing regular physio at this point, like just stretching my legs and stuff. So they gave me codeine to kind of battle it. And when I was about 16, it was in my GCSEs, um, I was taking more codeine than I should have. I was told that it should be one a day and I was taking them like paracetamols because I then became so used to the fact that I was taking them. So then the pain would just like shine through and it was just a vicious cycle really. When I was about 16, 17, I was doing, so I'd done music GCSE, I was, I got up to grade five guitar, was preparing for grade six, and was doing GCSE and um, A-level music. And with this, you have to be grade five minimum in something. So the importance of me having um, this grade five and then practicing to grade six was quite important. During my GCSEs, this is quite an important thing to know. I was able to get quite a lot of support from like um, like learning support and stuff. So I spent a lot of my time when I was supposed to be doing PE in learning support studying and the head of learning support just happened to be my history teacher. So because my mum at the time couldn't afford a doctor's note, I was able to get the recommendation um, adjustments that I needed as she was able to recommend them. So I was able to start using my laptop in classes to take notes and then that kind of led to me being given extra time in assessments and a laptop to use in written assessments. This didn't include maths, Spanish, I think, um, and I had the option to use it in science for when there was more lengthy stuff, but all the calculation stuff. So it was quite complex because, and luckily it was all fine and it all works, but it meant that I had some work on a laptop and some on the paper. So I really had to keep careful um, 
but it was fine and I was lucky to be able to get all those adjustments at my state school. So then when I was 16, I went to a different school for sixth form. I did my A-levels and I started with, um, I was doing A-level maths and further maths, which means I was doing maths in one year, as well as music, economics and physics. So with physics and economics and music, I was allowed to use my laptop, no problem, when I needed it. And with the practical side, um, with maths, as we got into the colder months in like November, December time, I really, really struggled with taking notes in class. But luckily I had a friend who was happy to support me with that. So um, I would just, I would just attend the class sitting with her. She would make all the notes and then send them to me. So um, it was really really quite a, a great thing and I was in a lucky position for that. I attended a music school from a young age and that is where I learned guitar and drums. One Saturday when I was there, um, I was in my lesson with my guitar teacher and he commented on my, I was going to say posture, it's not posture, on my technique, that my hand was in the correct, incorrect position and he kind of, um, motion towards my hand and kind of like pulled it upwards which like was absolutely fine except it made me scream because it was incredibly painful and he looked at me and was like that's not normal so then kind of um because my hand was quite flat and so we kind of spoke through it and he was like okay just put where's comfortable and then he explained what was incorrect and was like okay now try and move it and I couldn't in my wrist without extreme pain and so first we had this initial thing of oh wow she's got carpal tunnel and that is when so I initially did go to the physio who I was currently seeing they brushed it off again and were like oh no it's fine um you just need to watch what you eat you need to make sure you exercise you just need to be healthy bear in mind at this point I was like a normal weight for someone of my age maybe ever so slightly more just because I'm short but there was there was nothing of concern and basically because of that um we were lucky enough to be able to get um some assistance from private healthcare and I went to go and see some doctors and did possibly every test so over the course of the three years i had had so many blood tests mris x-rays and bear in mind all of these caused me a great deal of stress and pain so i hated it i then had to do more because for some reason the files didn't they didn't have access to files or whatever and then i had to have an electronic nerve conductor test Basically, they hooked up my fingers to some wires or something. I can't remember. And basically, I just had to say when I felt stuff. And everything that they did came back fine. They were like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with you. And bear in mind, at this point, stuff was getting worse and worse and worse. So fine. one of the final things when we were talking about, bear in mind, carpal tunnel had been ruled out at the very beginning because like, we tried the splints and um, medication for inflammation and stuff and no, nothing happened. So the final thing to try with regards to carpal tunnel was steroids. So I had two steroid injections into my wrists. God, it makes me queasy thinking about it still now. Um, and I was to go back to my doctor and my consultant uh, two weeks later. For those two weeks, my wrist was fallen. I couldn't use them. I had to cancel driving lessons, couldn't play guitar, couldn't do anything. And it was just so painful. I literally felt like they were rock solid the whole time. Sorry. <laughs> um, and yeah, so we went back and he was like, okay, yeah, you definitely don't have carpal tunnel. And I was like, I thought we already cleared this. And then he sat me down and was like, dun, dun. Oh. He like pressed a bunch of, there's like these hypersensitivity points 
or something and if you tick a certain amount of them you and everything else has been ruled out so you it's very much um trial and error oh my god what's the term like cancellation elimination there we go process of elimination uh so yeah process of elimination so he done all these things and was like you tick a certain amount you've got fibromyalgia firstly i was like thank fuck thank god because now we know what's wrong with me it's a chronic condition it's never going to get better only worse but you can control it and maintain it it comes with a bunch of other side effects so here's some antidepressants to help you get by. Yeah. I was seeing a very successful physio at the time and I was learning more about my body, um, but just because of financial constraints, like I couldn't carry on with the private healthcare. And we didn't really see much purpose since there was no ongoing treatment. It was more about management. So then I started on my journey of actually just learning about fibromyalgia. I joined forums and research groups, charities, so much. And I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I know quite a lot about it. I know quite a lot about it. So my main symptoms that I deal with, so from a young age, I have had mental health issues. And by that, I mean like, 14 but these were unrelated to the pain and they kind of have like tied in together so this got progressively worse I started to have a lot more just general anxiety as opposed to kind of like um <clears throat> sporadic panic attacks and stuff it was more of a constant anxiety so I did fall into kind of more of a negative state because of that, but I was very, very aware of it. So I was talking about it a lot and I wanted to find out more to help myself. I started exercising a lot more. So my parents got me a gym membership and I started cycling and swimming because they were the two things that they said was really good because they're low impact and it they take the pressure off your body, but still involve a lot still involve a lot of movement so this is like one of those static bikes that you sit down on as opposed to like leaning up i can actually cycle now like out and about but that took a while <laughs> uh and with swimming it's just like breaststroke and for a maximum of half an hour and that has taken me like five years to build up so yeah anyway so i was doing exercise i was watching what i was eating i.e just trying to be more conscious of putting good stuff into my body and not bad stuff obviously easier said than done so i've had bad health things i've had good health times everyone goes through it because like i i because i can control it and i know you know what if i have a bit of a binge day because i'm craving it i might feel a bit worse off tomorrow but then i'll start again and it's fine it's better anyway so and sleep sleep was a big one sorting out my sleep and getting a decent schedule that took me a long time to get into and now i'm like in bed by 10 or 11 that is great and i just sleep in a month so yeah that's kind of a bit of the history and i think that's where we're going to leave it at another time I will take you through my more recent journey of kind of getting to where I am now as opposed to discovering it thank you so much for watching this one please do reach out to me if you have any questions concerns or thoughts or anything I'm always happy to help if you would like to be um, <clears throat> added to any support groups or you're struggling to find information please do let me know I will put a couple of charities in the description below i just overall just want to raise awareness not only for fibromyalgia but for invisible illnesses and chronic pain because they are just not known to be like how debilitating they are people just kind of brush them off um 
but yeah they are so thank you so much for watching this if you could maybe like subscribe share let all your friends know oh i don't really care this is me just sharing who i am please do follow my instagram if you want to um get more regular updates about what i'm doing to raise awareness and also my sustainability tips and tricks and things that i do but other than that thank you so much we'll talk soon and yeah have a nice day have a nice week have you had a nice weekend <laughs> happy monday and it is a happy money Mon money it is a happy monday guess who just finished week one of lectures i'm so happy yes i know it's week seven but I'm in such a better place than I was this time last week. And yeah, I'm happy. It's just gone noon and I've finished week one today. I'm probably going to do a little bit more work, a bit of project stuff. Some um, blog reading, kind of catch up on some of those little like lovey things, self-care things I like to do. And then I'm going to get takeout tonight because yeah I want to and I want to see my friend and have a catch up so yeah sorry for like um, sniffing this in but thank you guys for watching and thank you Jess for convincing me to actually post this vlog see you soon